We're going to bring John Rettinger of Techno Buffalo on to talk about Apple, but given some of the brouhaha brewing over that company, Tesla Motors, a New York Times review, and questions about battery life, we thought it'd be appropriate to ask John Rettinger about this. Why? Well, A, he thinks it's phony, or at least thinks that the New York Times has gotten something wrong, and two, he's on the waiting list to buy one of these cars. So, John, you apparently know from which you speak. Why do you then side with Musk and doubt the New York Times article? So I'm not coming out and saying anything was fabricated, but a few things definitely show it's a little bit fishy. First, the Tesla is equipped with a 3G radio that gives the company the ability to track pretty much everything that the car is doing. So charge, total charge, and miles. Whether or not customers want that is another discussion. So they are aware of the miles the car uh, can drive. Second of all, if your car can drive 300 miles, are you going to plan a 350-mile road trip without stopping at a gas station? Just to make a point. They are aware of the mileage range. There's an EPA range of 265 miles and a potential range of 300. Real-world driving, you don't get that 300 miles. So certainly electric driving is different uh, than traditional internal combustion engine, but you have to live within those limitations. And it does not sound as if that was done at all. There are supercharger locations. There are charging locations. You don't drive farther than the range tells you and then be surprised when your car stops. In other words, the test just wasn't good enough. I mean, you're saying it's not fabricated, but maybe the test wasn't rigorous enough, it wasn't accurate enough, it just wasn't good enough. Yeah, so the test isn't testing what the car can actually do. I mean, certainly driving outside of the range just to make a point and take a picture on a flatbed is dramatic, and it certainly makes a very strong point. Uh, but there also are strong influences against uh, the electric car industry, and whether or not those played a part in the review, you know, you'd have to ask the author. Uh, but the car has a rated range, to so plan a trip longer than that rated range is foolish, and you can't hold a car accountable, just like you wouldn't hold any internal combustion car accountable for running out of gas. That is on the driver solely, for making sure you fill up, whether it's uh, in, in electrons or in gasoline. And we've just actually been watching the losses on the stock um, being paired. It's now down only about six tenths of a percent. It was down by over one percent earlier on. I just want to quickly ask you, you're on the wait list to buy a Tesla, right? You really like this car. You are forking out that <laughs> amount of money. You are backing this car. I am backing the car and I'm backing the company, not from a green standpoint, like a lot of people out there. As a gearhead, to have that instant torque and that zero to 60 time convertible with a 911, the performance model, is absolutely incredible. I love it. It's an American company creating American jobs right here in California. You know, John, we got to go, but quickly, listen, there's no doubt electric cars are faster. I drove the Roadster S, the, the first Tesla. I mean, the thing just goes because there's no combustion lag on the engine, but 45 minutes to charge? Don't you think that's a drawback? So to get a full charge, absolutely. But from a supercharger, you can get up to 80% charge in just 30 minutes. Now, yeah. certainly there's not a time parity with internal combustion, but that's pretty darn